Hello, welcome. In this video, we're going to be looking at the cost of leasing and buying a 2021 Accord Sport and how that might compare to buying a three-year-old version, a used version of that car. Now to do that, we have a spreadsheet that we're going to build and you should have a copy of this already made. If you don't, go to Canvas and get a copy. You can see up here, you should also add your name and over here, make sure you share it so it's not private, like I have it set right here, but so that I can actually edit it and help you in your work and so that others at our school can see it. So go ahead and make a copy, add your name, and toggle those share settings so that I can edit it. Now, in our case, we're going to look at this specific car with a purchase price of $27,430. I'll type that in, 27430 It'll be the same as leased or bought new. And we're going to use this specific car just to make sure that you're able to recreate this data and analyze it for a car of your own choice later on. So we're, we're using this uh, as a learning tool, really. And in this case, we'll start with leasing. Now, leasing means you're not buying the car. You're essentially renting it per, per month for some amount of money, for some amount of months, and then at the end, you give the car back. And as many of these videos and readings have explained, uh, that's great because you are typically going to pay lower per month. And if you can't afford, in this case, look at the financing, it's $7.25 per month. So if you can't afford that, but you can afford the lease, it gives you the ability, it gives you access to a nice car that you can rely on. So that's certainly a perk. And there are other perks as well, uh, but it's going to cost you. And here, there's lots of settings we can change. Uh, if you look at the mileage, you're going to pay more to be allowed to drive that car more miles per year. And whatever you pick, if you go over that mileage, you're going to pay a fee per mile. We'll leave it at 12000 And the cost per month, it's a little tricky, right? 208 per month, I guess that's their, the Honda advertisement. But as you scroll down, you can actually see what dealers are actually offering in your area. So right here, it's actually 219 per month for 36 months. So it's 219. So I'm going to enter that in. And the down payment here, if we go to our summary, scroll up, our down payment is 3080. So you have to give them $3,080 in cash. And the destination and handling fees is a fee just for a new car. So it's shipping and handling, essentially, it's 995. And that's going to be true for buying it from them. They would want the same down payment, but the monthly is much higher. So let's just go analyze that. Go to finance. Here it is, seven twenty-five per month. So that's we're going to actually leave it at that. So I'll put seven twenty-five. And here the total paid it's going to be equal to for the lease the monthly amount times the term of our lease, which is thirty-six months, plus the down payment, plus destination and handling. And then I can just actually drag that formula down here to do it for buying the car new anyway, as well. And you can see there's quite a difference there. And right away, it might seem like leasing is certainly a better option. But don't forget that at the end, when you trade the car in, when you're leasing, you don't get any value back. But when you sell the new car, you do get some value back. So how much would we expect to get back on this Honda? Well, it's a three-year period which we're paying off this car. So just as a model, I, I chose a, a car, a similar car and a uh, similar car from three years uh, ago. So in this, this is what a car from three years ago of the same type of model as an Accord Sport is actually selling for today. Is that a perfect approximation? Not at all, but it gives us something to think about, something that we can use. So it's $21,995. So Maybe in three years we can sell it for about $21,995, which is certainly less than we paid for it, but it's better than zero. Now the total cost is where things start to change. For the lease, the total cost is going to be the total you've paid for the car minus the end value that you can sell it back for. So it's going to be that $11,959. But then for the new car, if you look at that, it actually ends up being lower because you did a, you know you do actually pay more money over those three years, significantly more. But then when you sell that car back, you will have really only spent about $8,000 to drive that car for three years. 
And that is the difference between what you paid and what you're able to sell it back for. Now, if we're looking at buying a car new, uh, it's certainly going to be better than leasing it over the long term. But you have to pay more per month, which can be difficult. But buying used, how can we model that? Well, let's just use that 21995, that, that 2018 car that we were just looking at and analyze it. So here it is. And we go to calculate monthly payment. Let's make sure everything's set up. You can see right here that there's $2,200 for a down payment. There is no destination and handling fee because it's not a new car. And for the 36 month that's set down here, not 24, it's 563 per month. So I'm going to enter that. Okay, so our total paid. Again, I could just drag this down, but I'll rehash the formula. It's going to be that monthly amount times 36 months plus the down payment plus destination handling fees, of which there are none. And that's even less. It's 22468 So how much can we sell this car for after those three years? Well, at that point, the car will be six years old, right? It was already three years old when we bought it, and then another three years passed, so it's six years old in total. So I just looked at a car that is six years older um, right now to see what that might sell for. And I don't have an exact model. And of course, it's going to the, the, it's gonna be all over the place, right? 15, 19. And uh, you could really think about the miles that you would probably drive at that point if you want to understand what you might be able to sell it for. But right here, I'm just going to pick 15,590. I think that's reasonable because there's lots of 15 nines that I see here. It's only 14, a little bit less, but I'm not sure the reasons for that. But it's 15,8 over here. So there's lots of variation, but I'm going to pick 15,590. That seems fair. So that means that its end value will be 15. I'll go pack, I forgot already. 15,590. Okay. And the total cost is going to be the difference between what you paid for it over those three years minus the end value, which we already have as a formula right here. So I'm just dragging it down. I could type in equals F4 minus G4, but that's only going to be a cost of about 6878 What's interesting is if you look at the monthly cost based on the total cost, right? I said based on the cost to own. I'll say based on the total cost just to be consistent. Right, we're looking at this column right here. So it's just going to be that number divided by 36, right? And I think the autofill is correct here. So... You can see it from this perspective as well that buying used is certainly the cheapest. It's 191 per month. Of course, again, the problem is you have to pay more per month in order to own it, and that would change, of course, if you put down a larger um, down payment, right? That would impact it. And now what we want to do is create a graph that shows, well, what does it initially look like for the, the cost of leasing versus buying new and used? And then we want to make another chart where it actually incorporates total cost and not just the total you have paid, right? So we'll have a total paid chart and a total cost chart, and you'll see them side by side. I think the easiest way to do this, um, I'm going to create a sheet right here where I have the month, and then I have three things, lease, buying new, and then buying used. And the months are going to go from 0, 1, all the way to 36. So let's, I can type them out or just kind of drag it down. So one more. All right. So now I need to start populating these cells. And I want to start the lease off by incorporating, pressing equals, I'm going to call to the destination and handling fee. And then I'll type up here plus the down payment. So that's the upfront cost for the lease. And for buying new, it's going to be equal to, click over, same thing, down payment plus destination and handling fee. For buying used, type equals, it's going to be equal to the down payment plus a $0 destination and handling fee. So these are our starting, our starting values right here. And then from that point on, we want to add the monthly cost to that starting value. Now, Honda, I believe, actually makes you pay for some cars that first month of lease up front, right from the beginning. But I'm going to assume 
they may have you pay it after the first month or at the start of the, the first month or however you want to say it. But I want to count it as a separate number. So then what we're going to say is that our monthly payment type equals for the lease. It's right here in C2. And I hit enter. But I want to add that to the starting value here because what I want to happen in each row here at the month, let me put this in the middle so it looks prettier, each row should represent the total I paid for the lease or buying it new or buying it used at that point. So when I look at one month, I want to look at what's the total I've spent at this point to have this car. Well, it's got to be the starting amount that I spent plus the month here. So I want to add this to the value that I have in this cell right here. In, in B2. So I'm going to type this plus B2. And there it adds it. But I want to lock it. So I always want to call to that first month plus some amount of months right here. So how do I do that? Well, I've got to tweak this a little bit. The monthly payment here, C2 in sheet one, that's going to be multiplied by the number of months that have passed. So it's really the cost per month times the number of months plus B2, which is where we started. That's all it really is. And I want to lock B2 with that dollar sign there. Now what this does is it always calls to sheet uh, one, cell C2, and I want to lock that with a dollar sign, multiplies it by the number of months, and then adds the, the starting cost here, month of zero. That's the correct formula we need. And then if we drag this down, let's just go all the way here. We can see 11959 at the end, which is good because it matches this number here. So we just do that again and we're done. And it'll be faster now. So now what we want to do is we want to look at for a new car. Type in equals. I want to call up the monthly payment. So I'm just, as I can see it's blocked. So I'm going to scroll over. There's the monthly payment. I'm going to put that dollar sign between the C and the 3. So it always calls to that cell. And then I want to add to it. Well. I want to multiply the number of months first, I should have said that, and then I want to add this cell right here, adding a dollar sign in between, and then let's just drag it down and make sure it's working. We get 3175, which is what the number we get right here as well. Perfect. One last time, let's do it for used. So for used, you want to grab that monthly payment, and again, I'm calling to cells so that if I ever want to change these values here, it'll change my corresponding tables. So I want to add a dollar sign between the C and the 4. Hit enter and see what it looks like. Great. I want to multiply that by the number of months and add D2 right here. But I want to put a dollar sign between D and 2. And it's mad at me for some reason. Let's take a look. She 4 times A1 plus D2. Ooh, why is it multiple parameter 2 expects... Uh, number values, but month is a text and cannot be co coerced to a number. Interesting. What did I grab there? C4. That's your monthly. Hmm. Try this one more time. Equals, click on sh this sheet. Grab a monthly, enter. That looks good. But I want to lock that. Maybe there's something with the order in which I type that times A3 plus D dollar sign 2. Enter. There we go. I wonder what happened there. So now if we drag this down, we can see it's happening. Okay. It's only 22,468. Now, I am going to graph this in a moment, but I'm going to duplicate this sheet first because I also need to go back to my table and and just finish a couple of things here. I want to connect the monthly cost based on the total cost, which again was what you paid here minus the end value. That gives you your total cost. But if this is the total cost, we can say, well, how much do we spend for each of these cars over the three years that we had them? Well, we just divide it by, by each of these by 36 to find what we would, we would actually be paying per month. And that's the formula entered here. This equals H2 divided by 36. This one says equals H3. This cell divided by 36. And this says uh, look to H4 divided by 36 and that's your monthly cost. Now these are the monthly costs we're going to enter in our third sheet. Right now it says copy of sheet 2. I don't like that. I'm going to 
rename that sheet three so it looks neater. And now we still we still have these same starting amounts. That's not really changing. But what we're doing is deleting all of this because we're actually comparing based on the actual cost of each car split over the 30 months, 36 months, what would that be per month? Well, in this case, I'm going to call to this number now, 332. And for buying it new, I'm going to call to this number right here. And for buying it used, I'm going to call to this number here. It's just saying on average, what would you pay per month? And so we start off in the beginning and we're at zero, right? And then with after after that, that's our starting point. At the end of the month, we repeat it again. And I always want to actually I want to call to I two each time, I three each time, and I four each time. And then we're just going to kind of drag this down here and see what happens. So notice it's not doing anything. It's not increasing. Why is that? Well, because these numbers should be based on the months that have passed. So in the beginning, no time has passed. So I'm going to multiply them by zero, but it's much easier just to say A2. And it's getting a little funky. I don't know what's wrong there. Oh, we have an error. Whenever I have a random error, I just delete what I can in the cell, hit enter, and then undo it. There we go. So this, this times zero. So in the beginning that makes sense there's nothing paid. And in each case we're multiplying by zero. But notice when I dragged the formula it didn't work. It's calling to B2, which is right here. We want to always always call to A2. So that's why we need here for A, we need a dollar sign for the column and a dollar sign between A and a two to always lock over there. So if I go like this, it'll you'll see now it's always calling to A2. If I select all three and drag it down, this gives me the average cost per month over those 36 months. But what did I do wrong? Oh, I know I did wrong. I locked, <laughs> I shouldn't lock it being multiplied by A2. I'll show you, let me show you why. As this gets dragged down, I want it to call to the next month, the first month, and then so on and so forth. So we don't actually want to lock that. But here we just want to make sure it's calling to A2, at least the first time. And then here, we wanted to call the A2 the first time as well. So I'm deleting those dollar signs. And then it's just a matter of selecting both cells and dragging it down. And did I do something wrong? Let's see. No, it looks good. A3, yep. Okay, so, hmm. I don't know what's happening here. Why, why, why? This is, let's see, this is I2. Oh, I know, this should be I, this is J2, it should be I3, I apologize. And this should be, I believe, I4. Let's see, this seems to be an error, we'll fix that. So this is, I, I forgot to type it in, this should be I3. But, let's see, sheet I3, oh, there's some kind of symbol in there, okay. So now as we drag this down, I was just fixing the notation of the formula there. Boom. We can see that these three numbers, the 11, 9, 5, 9, 8, 1, 8, 0, and 6, 8, 7, 8, uh, they match these numbers here, which makes sense. So now we have everything we need to make our tables showing all of this information. So let's do that. Go to Insert, Chart. Okay, we got a blank chart. And we want to tell it what to do. So we want a line graph. In our first case, we want to call to this sheet right here. We're going to look at the total cost per month. So we want to tell the sheet to do that. So there's lots of ways to do it. I'm going to say the date rate, data range that we're looking at. I'm going to click over here to select my data range. Go to my second sheet, pick the first column, and hit OK. You can already see it's starting to grab some data about something. All right, next, let's grab some series here. So I want to grab the data for leasing. And then I want to grab down here, add more series. I want to add the data for buying new. And then, let's do one more. 
I want to grab the data for buying used. Boom. Now you can mess around with the scale on this. I, I think it's most important at least have a title. And we're going to try to use the same language that we're using here. This is just the total paid chart, right? It's tracking the total paid over time. And you can see that, um, so there's some confusion here with my graph. Let me delete that. What did I just do? Okay. So here, <laughs> clearly I have to edit this a little bit. I, I messed up with my series, so I want to get rid of the month series remove. Okay, it looks better. So un under customize, you can change all kinds of things, but the point is right now, um, leasing seems to be the cheapest it's all the way down here, whereas buying new is the most expensive. So I'm going to shrink that down. If you want to add the numbers for the months at the bottom here, as I think you should, under x-axis, if you just click month, in this case month, or you can click here and then go to your sheet. You can click that as well. And then you get the numbers there. Um, and now we're going to repeat the process, but we'll look at how to take into, effect, into account what happens when you sell those cars back. So we're going to go to insert, go to chart. Okay, go to a line graph. We'll just add x axis and series. Let's do that here. Okay. So Frank keeps asking me for a row. So I'll, you know what? I will. Hold on a second here. Go to my data range and let's see if we can grab it all at once. There we go. Boom. Hit OK. And there we grabbed it all at once. That was much easier. And there are now four categories in here. We don't want that. So we want to remove the series that's put down for month. And we want to, for X axis, add a month back. That looks a little bit better. Let's see that. OK. So we just need to fix the, uh, the title. So we go to Customize, Title. And here it is, Title Text. So we have total paid uh, versus, let's say, total cost, I call it. And again, that's just our way of quickly saying, okay, that takes into fact account into account that you can sell these cars. And what's interesting is you can see that uh, at first it seems as well, leasing is the best because you pay the least out of the cash you have. But over time, leasing in fact costs the most because there's nothing to sell back. Whereas buying used is clearly uh, the best choice in terms of the total cost of the car. Right, it's certainly the lowest number here. It's interesting in this case that the total cost is so close between new and used, especially when their purchase prices are so far apart to begin with, and that's to do with depreciation depreciation rates over time. All right, so I hope this helped. Um, I will just quickly kind of click around so you can see formulas and pause the video if this is something you need to get. Here I'm clicking through. Feel free to rewind, you can pause and see what I did. But this is what you should ultimately submit just to show uh, as a proof of concept that you can get through this information on a spreadsheet. Thanks.